So there's been quite a lot of press recently and a lot of people are now aware that overuse of antimicrobials when you go to your GP, when you take your coughing child to your GP is contributing to antimicrobial resistance. And what we're seeing in the veterinary realm is the same sort of thing. We do find antimicrobial resistant bugs when we go looking for them on farms. And we know that some of those may be the same sorts of bugs that are getting into people. So started by bringing people together in a room and thinking about what would we like to do? What questions would we like to answer about antimicrobial use, antimicrobial stewardship, and antimicrobial resistance in the farming and livestock industries? So here at the university's farm, for example, we have the opportunity to put into practice the research done in the laboratory, to look for resistance uh, within organisms isolated from the farm, and to look very carefully at how we treat the animals. So we look at a multitude of different areas. We talk about human behavior and why do veterinarians prescribe antimicrobials the way that they do? Why do farmers use them the way that they do? What records do they keep? We think about the microbiology and what's going on on our Wellington boots, what's going on in the field, what's going on coming out of the animals, what's on the grass, what's being eaten and uptaken by the animals, and all of those different realms as far as what data do we collect as well as what people do we speak to and what information do they give us when we're doing interviews and we ask them, what do you really think about this problem? And what's been key to that is really being out there and working with groups that approach us and that we approach as well. So these are um, just some examples of the recruitment posters I've been using um, to sort of get the message out about the project, to sort of gauge interest in, with the farmers. I think by getting groups of farmers together, putting the ball in their court almost, um, and asking how they would tackle their own antibiotic use is a really exciting and great opportunity for them. Part of what I enjoy about working in academia is I feel like it is my job to be a bit of an independent party, to offer up the knowledge that I have, to bring the knowledge together that I see in a number of fields and the new knowledge that we're generating. And what we like to do is really to co-create that with the farmers, with the veterinarians, with the people on the ground that are doing this to say, nobody really knows the answer to this question. We need all of our brains working together in order to find a good answer and an answer that's gonna work for you on the ground. It's impacting on uh, governments and their commitment to reduce antimicrobial resistance or the risk thereof. It's impacting on the pharmaceutical industry in that we're helping and advising them in the more responsible use of their products. It's helping vets to devise better auditing protocols for medicines use and farmers to use the medicines more responsibly. It will impact on animal health because we're integrating both the use of medicines with herd health management and the disease prevention. And ultimately that will also have an impact on society at large, both ensuring that our food is wholesome and does not contain any residues of medicines, but also in the long term reducing the risk of antimicrobial resistance developing through the use of medicines uh, in livestock agriculture. Over the course of the last six years, we've been able to reduce our use of critically important antimicrobials by about 90%. So we're really not using these medicines that are important in human medicine. And that message has spread, and now our practice has been held up as a bastion in the industry that it's possible to do this, it's possible to farm, it's possible to use, to prescribe as a veterinarian using fewer of these critically important antimicrobials. <laughs>